friends, it's Ro. Welcome back. Today, I have two things for you. First of all, I want to tell you a story of somebody who was an addict, was homeless, was in jail, defied the odds, and is now in his very last semester of school. However, however, he's still struggling, and even though he's struggling, raises money for other homeless people. We'll get to that in a second, but also, I want to share with you my new favorite thing, and I want you guys to have one. So if you're interested in all of this fun stuff, just a fun summer sit-down chit-chat. It's beautiful. It's a fun day. We're in quarantine. I need... I need to just sit and vent and talk to you guys because, because, <laughs> please keep watching. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Lives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. We don't glorify or glamorize prison or prison wife life here, but I will teach you how to make the best out of this really painful and hopefully one shot deal. Do me a favor and hit subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. I'll tell you why in a second. But before we get into my friend Josh's story, I wanna unbox something new with you because I'm so freaking excited for this. So I was offered a necklace by this company called Yafini. I think that's how you say it. Can you guys see? My camera does not like to, you can't see that, can you? There it is. They do personalized jewelry. They do necklaces, earrings, rings, bracelets, all of that stuff. And they offered me a personalized necklace. You know, like the Carrie Sex in the City one. Well, they offered me whatever I wanted, but I thought that was so cool. I've always wanted one. Here's the thing. A lot of people will not get a tattoo with their loved one's name on it. A tattoo with their loved one's name on it, no. A tattoo of their loved one's name, their significant other's name, because it's supposedly bad luck. It's like an old wives tale that it's bad luck and as soon as you get that tattoo, supposedly you're gonna break up or things start to head south. I've heard people say it. I don't have an Adam tattoo, but what better than an Adam tattoo? Next best thing is an Adam nameplate necklace. I am so excited for this because I don't really love my name, so. We've got Adam, there it is, between the lights and this thing moving. It kind of looks cool, but there it is. And what's cool about this necklace, what I love about this necklace is that it can be made longer, shorter, longer or shorter. Wow, Ro, wow. See, it's been a while since I've spoken to people, quarantine. So it has two different clasps, so you can make it almost chokerish, or you can make it a long necklace. So I wanna put this on and never take it off. And the rep from the company who reached out to me, you guys know I will not work with anybody that I don't truly believe in, but she offered me discount codes for you guys, and it is an affiliate link, I have to say that. One and only one that I've ever done so far, it will always, from now on, from this day forward, it'll be in the description box below because like can you even I got the rose gold you can get all different fonts there was one that over the first letter you could get a crown you know because we're queens so 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 many different things you could get script you can get print I might get my own name too because I can't wear this like to work and stuff like that because you guys know unless I'm like Adam's my what dad because they don't know about my relationship there hopefully I won't be there for too long and hopefully he'll be home soon but let's put this on I'm gonna put it on the shorter oh that's badass this actually comes off. I've never seen that before. That's cool AF. I'm obsessed with this. Okay, stop talking and just do it. <laughs> do you love how I talk to myself during these videos? Do I want it on the long one? Or do I want it on the short one? I think I want it on the short. Okay, oh, that was so easy to get on. That makes me so happy. I'm glad I don't have nails. Okay, so this is on the short one. It's pretty. I'm obsessed, look at this. Oh my God, I can't wait to, well, not that we can go to visit right now, but I can't wait to send him pictures of this. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, moving on from there. I'm so hot, you guys. I can't have the fan on because you could hear it in the background. And when I put my wind cover on my microphone, you could see it. So I'll figure it out. But it just reminds me, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday I was doing an interview live with this company called Hello Lucky that donated books to Strong Prison Wives and Families. And I was all set up and I had a shirt on that has puff sleeves and a square neck and I'm sitting actually right in this spot. But I, for some reason, do not, it's like a dead zone. I don't get 
Wi-Fi here. Oh, but I forgot and I was all set up. I had my shirt, you know, pulled up and I was sitting and it's a crop because sometimes I'll get clothes like if it's really cheap just for videos that I'll never actually wear in real life and it was too small, but it was a couple dollars and it's cute. I'll wear it on another video. It's the orange puff sleeve shirt when I do finally wear it. So I'm sitting there and she's like, you're breaking up a little bit, but it can work. But then I couldn't hear her. So I take my light. This is on live video. I take my light and I take my phone because we're on Instagram and I move it over really quick. It's on a, like this, it's literally on this tripod, like this all through my ring light, trying to like, it was just so rigged up and I move it to the side of the bed and I sit there. So now I'm not on the side of the bed and I'm like this, my head's cut off. And so I'm slouching. And so the girls were out. Well, meanwhile, all of this stress and me moving, my nose started running because I my allergies are bad in the spring. So my nose is like literally a faucet and my upper lip is sweating because now I'm nervous that I need to get on camera, right? So I'm like, all right, that's okay. I can't see myself because it's a little box. It's Instagram live. And if you've never done one or seen one, it's two people. Like one, one box is on top, like Brady Bunchish, and one is on the bottom. And I was on the bottom and it was really small. My head's chopped off. So I'm talking and I'm like, this interview is going great. The lady was so awesome. She was so personable. This was about two o'clock in the afternoon. I did it on my lunch break. I finished. I thought I was like badass. I'm like, I nailed it. Sometimes I do these interviews and I beat myself up because I'm going to talk about the same stuff over and over again. It's the same stories, but some days you're on and some days you're off. And yesterday I just felt really on. Other days when I don't feel on, I beat myself up and I'm like, that sucked. I should have said it this way. But yesterday I was like, mm, that was, mm, yeah, I got it. Right. <laughs> so I changed back into comfy clothes. I went downstairs and I finished my work day. So it wasn't till about nine o'clock at night till I was able to watch the video because I like to watch stuff like that back and see how I sound, where I can perfect what I'm saying because I'm speaking on behalf of strong person wives and families. So I'm watching it and I realized that when I moved over and I was hunched over, the girls were out on display. On display, on display, Melissa Gorga. Okay, the girls were out on display. My best friend and I do that all the time. Tell me in the comments if you guys do that, where if somebody says a phrase, but it's a line of a song, you have to sing it. So anyway, the girls were out, all the goods. Then all during this, I'm trying to figure out how to wipe my nose and my upper lip sweat because I didn't have a tissue. I'm trying to figure out how to like do it without being too obvious, but now I'm nervous because I had to move, remember? So like I'm like this, and then all during the time I'm nervous, I started air quoting everything, everything I'm saying. I must have used air quotes 75 times during this thing. Literally, like every other sentence had an air quote. And then one time I was like, yeah, this girl was telling me about her friends. I mean, friends. <laughs> I was literally the butt of somebody's joke. We make jokes about people who do air quotes too much. I was her, ugh. The things that you can just laugh about, seriously. Okay, besides the point. Woof, clearly I'm on today, right? I'm on a something. Okay, it's this necklace that made me so excited. Did I say there's gonna be a discount code for you guys below? Because I should not be the only one that gets to reap the benefits of this beautiful thing. I think this is like $19 or something with the discount. I think it's like 50 without. So here's the story that I wanted to share with you. A lot of my channel is about second chances, obviously people who are incarcerated, but people who deal with incarceration, a lot of us are, or a lot of them, and us as people who support them know that there's a lot of addicts inside of jail. I think it's like 80% of people inside prison have addiction issues, they're there because of drugs. And then also a lot of addiction leads to homelessness. So people from those walks of life find my channel and they interact with me. Well, there's this man who reached out to me like last year and he was homeless for a long time and he was an addict and he's never asked me for anything. He has been so supportive of me, supportive to the point where he vouched for me and put his, his reputation on the line to try to connect me with people with these huge audiences so we could get Adam's story out there. That's incredible. He doesn't know me at all except for what I post on YouTube. He sent me links to an article and a news segment that showcased him a while back because he was proud of himself. And he wanted me to know a little bit more about his background and where he came from. His name is Josh, by the way. Josh was an alcoholic. He went through a rough time and he wound up in the Midwest homeless. And he said in that interview that you don't even understand. There are no words for sleeping outside on the cement 
under a bridge when it is sub zero degree weather in a Midwest winter. My friends from the Midwest, I'm sure you can let us know what a winter is there like in the comments below. What a winter like is there? What a winter like is there? What a winter there is like? Whoa, what is my prob? What a winter there is like in the comments below. He was able to kind of work his way out of that. He met the right people. He's super personable, very articulate, very friendly. And he met up with people from a church. And then he started to make connections with people there. And people were giving him opportunities. And a lot of people there told him, listen, you need to go back to school. You're smart. Education is a way that you can get yourself out of this because you can get a job when you have a degree. He did not have more than an eighth grade education at that point. He dropped out of school after eighth grade, I think it was. And he said he thought about it and he thought, if I don't do this right now, then I'm not gonna do it. And he had all of this encouragement from these beautiful souls who only wanted the best for him. And I think he actually got his GED while he was homeless. So he started while he was there living in the street, studying algebra and geometry and history and all of that stuff, earned his GED homeless living under a bridge, incredible, and then was able to get himself into a top 50 university. While this is all happening, obviously university means tuition, he was able to raise money and get some help for his tuition. But he was still struggling and suffering. During an extremely, extremely freezing cold week, he decided that he wanted to help other homeless people because he knew what it felt like to be under a bridge living outside in the freezing cold. Your life is at risk every single night when you're living in conditions like that. So he started raising money for homeless people so that he could put them up in hotel rooms as many nights as he possibly could based off the amount of money that he would make. And this is all documented, you guys. This isn't bullshit. He wasn't trying to just take money for alcohol or drugs. He was sober at this point. The news was following him. There's articles written about him. There are people vouching that this is true. So I don't want you to be like, oh, just another addict. That's right. No, it was actually legitimate. I forgot to say here that he was living in a church at this point. He wasn't on the street when he was doing this. He shifted his focus. He knew that he needed to pay tuition, but he also knew that this was life or death for these people. You see this all the time in underserved communities and people who've been through it. They're the people usually who will go out of their way to give you the shirt off their back to make sure you have before they do. If you think about it, Tony Robbins came from a family. Adam calls him banana hands. He loves him, but his Tony Robbins' hands are so like unusually big. He just calls him banana hands. And I say banana like such a Jersey girl. He says banana hands. <laughs> Makes me laugh. Which reminds me of banana hammock. And now I'm way in a tangent. Way in a tangent. Why did, why did we just say this? Okay, stop. Tony Robbins came from nothing. He used to wonder on Thanksgiving if they would even eat, let alone have a Thanksgiving dinner. And he said that one time somebody came and donated a turkey and they were able to have an actual Thanksgiving dinner for the first time, maybe that he could remember in a really long time, whatever it was. And that's why you see him raising money for as many turkeys, like I think it's like 30,000 turkeys a year, if not more on Thanksgiving, because he didn't forget his roots. He didn't forget where he came from or his struggles. People like Josh, are incredible. So I'm telling you this story because Josh is out of money, okay? And Josh is an incredible person. He's a beautiful soul and he needs some help. So he set up a GoFundMe where I said, yes, send it to me. I'll make a video. He in fact offered to pay me $50 just to make this video for him. And I was like, no, <laughs> I don't want your money. I'm okay right now, use that money towards your tuition and let's put this out there. Because I'm not saying that you guys need to donate at all. Even if you just share this video, if you don't have a penny to your name, just sharing this video can get it in front of the eyes of the person who potentially could pay his whole tuition in one shot. That's $8,000 is a drop in the bucket or nothing to him. Or if 12,000 subscribers on YouTube and everybody donates 50 cents, a dollar, his whole tuition and more is paid. So whatever you could do, if you could do anything, that's amazing. If not, that's amazing too. Just like the video, share the video. And let's get this out to people who can pay Josh's tuition. And I texted him last night and I was like, I have an idea. 
And he said, what? And I was like, why don't you write the name of every single person that's donated on this video on your cap when you graduate? Because he only has one semester left. And then it could be like a selling point for people to donate. And he said, well, I would. But I've gotten help from so many beautiful souls that there actually won't be enough room on that hat and I want to make sure I thank everybody and plus the hat is rented and he can't do it but I just thought that that would be something fun but I did not tell him this part I did not take his $50 and I am going to donate any money made from the ads of this video to his GoFundMe unfortunately like my very best video has made $8 so I don't make a lot of money from AdSense hey but $8 is $8 more than he has hey everybody my name is Josh um Ro has agreed to do a video on my behalf to talk about my GoFundMe page. I really appreciate this favor from her because I'm in a bit of a pickle and she is uh, choosing to do a video about me to help me out. And I really appreciate that. Ro's a great lady. I've been a fan of her channel for a, you know, a long time and I was in prison myself once. So I'm a fan of a couple of prison channels. I like her channel. I like Big Herc's channel, um, Jessica Kent. I like some of the other guys. So having been in prison myself in the past, I can kind of relate to what's going on in some of these channels. I've always sort of supported Ro and uh, she's doing me this favor to uh, sort of help share my story and I really appreciate it. Uh, now to get into my story. So I was homeless on and off for a long time. I am 42 years old and uh, I was a heavy alcoholic. So for I'd say about 12 years, I faded in and out of homelessness because of my alcoholism. I got sober actually 12 years ago, but because of like the bad work reputation and everything I built when I was a, when I was a drunk, it was hard for me to find jobs and I remained homeless uh, for a long time after that. But in uh, 2015, I got myself together and I got my high school diploma at the, for the very first time at the age of 37. I got accepted to college, Iowa State University to be exact, soon after that. And to make a long story short, I have turned my life around, I've remained sober, and um, I have built up a 3.6 or thereabouts GPA average over the course of my last uh, four years here at Iowa State University. So I've turned myself around, but I've run into an issue. I have one more semester to go after this summer, and I have maxed out every loan and every grant that I could get. So if I want to finish school, I have to raise my own support to uh, get my, my last semester going and to graduate college. So I created a GoFundMe page. I've had the GoFundMe page for a while because I saw this coming for a while. But uh, unfortunately, I haven't had much success with it yet. But Ro has agreed to make a video to share my GoFundMe page and to sort of share my story and share my GoFundMe page and put it out there for me. I don't know exactly how much I need to raise for fall semester. I do know it's between $6,000 and $8,000, but I can't give you an exact amount because I don't know because I don't even think the school knows. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on with like COVID-19 and how that's affecting tuition and everything. So um, I, I don't have an exact dollar amount to give you uh, for as far as how much exact I need to raise. But if you see Rose's video here, and you feel moved to help me, I, I, would sh I would definitely appreciate it. And it doesn't have to be no big donation. You know, $5 helps. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not looking for one person to just donate like a huge amount of money. But if enough people donate like 5 or 10 bucks, I will uh, have a substantial amount that I can work with so that I can actually um, attend my final semester of college and graduate. This fall will be my final semester. I will be graduating with a, a liberal studies degree with an emphasis in advertising. Rose is also going to put um, in the description a couple of news stories about me because the local media here in Iowa has done a couple of stories about me. There's been a newspaper article about me and there's been a television, um, television story about me as well because of my whole homeless to college journey. So uh, don't feel obligated. If you don't want to help, you don't want to help and that's fine. But if you do feel like you would like to help, I would very much appreciate that. You know, I've worked... I was in the streets for my long time. I worked my way into Iowa State University. It is a top 50 university in this country, top 50 public university. I've gotten mostly A's through most of my time here, so I would like to be able to take my last semester of college and actually graduate because I've made it so far. And, you know, I just don't want financial stuff to like uh, hold me back from graduation. So I guess uh, that's all I have to say. I'm taking classes this summer. Um, now, the good news for me is that I. All I have left to take is filler classes because I've like, I've taken all the classes I need to take for my major. So basically through this summer and through this fall, if I'm able to attend this fall, 
I can take a bunch of just 200 level electives and still graduate because I've done everything I need to do for my major. So it's just a matter of uh, getting the funding going to uh, finish my last semester of college. So I want to thank Roe again. And by the way, um, for those of you out there who are supporting Roe and supporting uh, her husband, Adam, financially, and um, in, and in other ways too, mentally, psychologically, keep doing that. You know, I've never met Adam, but I know Roe is a great woman. Roe is a quality woman. I mean, like I told Roe the other day, I said, uh, I wish I could take you to Office Depot and take you to the printing section and make a bunch of copies of you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If we make like a like hundred copies of Roe, the world would be a better place. So I've got great respect for Roe. Um, she's the kind of person I would roll with and hang out with if we lived in the same state. And um, if you don't support me, definitely keep supporting her because like she's got a great cause going with the Free Adam thing. Um, I felt her out with t from time to time with that, and we'll continue to do so. And uh, she's a great lady, so just keep supporting her and keep getting the word out about her cause to free Adam and, and uh, some of the other stuff she gets involved in. I mean, anything Roe puts her weight behind is a worthy cause. So just, just remember that. If you don't help me, help out with some other cause that Roe is pushing, because if Roe's behind it, it's a good thing. Um, that's all I have to say for now. Thank you for listening to my story. And uh, I guess that's it. So let's get Josh's story out there. Leave some love for him in the comments below. He deserves it. By the way, oh my God, I thought my Adam necklace was gone. I love this. I love like a dainty, thin necklace. I love a name necklace. Ugh, I love Adam. Like this is all of the above amazing. I love rose gold. This is everything perfect about a necklace in one necklace. Can I say necklace one more time? Okay, it's hot in here. I gotta go. I think I've just boiled my brain because I'm making no sense. I love you guys. If you want this, just look in the, in the description box below. It'll always be there. There's discount codes in there for you guys. And if you're not subscribed, why? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. We're underrated and we need your subscription. So click there. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one.